Hi guys, welcome to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas, I'm standing here with Jerome, our foil designer, and we have quite a hot product here in front of us, which is our AeroCarve 2.0. Um, this is the choice of most of our team riders, of most the advanced guys out there. Um, they really like the carve, and we have it in two different construction levels here, the SLS and the D-Lab. Jerome, give us a bit of an overview. What's this wing about? Sure. So the carve uh, has always been our sort of low aspect ratio, low, medium, depending on how you want to see it, but it's around a six um, aspect ratio. Uh, it's our wing that sort of crosses over, over into kite foiling as well. And it's, it basically likes to be ridden fast. Mm -hmm. So when we design that particular wing, we expect the, the rider to be, you know, into the 20s, 20 knots, whereas a glide or a whiz are more designed to be ridden around 50 knots. So that's kind of the, the big difference. We've got profiles with a bit less camber, so they allow you to go fast, actually, without sort of being too powerful. Um, so that's why they feel great for freestyling, because you can really get that thing going super fast and then get a really good pop out of the, the speed. And they feel great on uh, big, fast waves as well. Uh, recently, we had uh, Finn Spencer in um, Ponta, uh, Preta. Ponta Preta on some serious waves. And uh, yeah, he was loving the, the 500, for example. He's a pretty light rider, yeah. uh, around 60 kilos. And uh, basically, you don't feel like you're, you're hitting that speed uh, speed walls. That's what these, these calves are, are about. Um, so don't expect to be gliding like you would be on a, on a glide or, or the wheeze or, or even the free. But, you know, if, if you need to go fast, that's when you want to look into the, the curve. And you want to have that maneuverability. Yeah, obviously, tip, uh, uh, what, reactions. what the sort of uh, low span uh, gives you is something that's really easy to, to, cur to carve from uh, toe side to heel side when you need to quickly change direction. Uh, those wings do it extremely well. Mm -hmm. Now we have the, the, the D-Lab version here as well. And I actually see this is the 1100. Yeah. And then the 850 doesn't quite look the same in terms of curvature. Um, so you actually fine tune all the different sizes for its individual intent of use and rider, right? Yeah, we took each size and we sort of um, gave it its own personality. Because for example, the, the bigger sizes, we wanted to make them looser and roll, whereas the little 500 I just talked about, we actually needed a little bit more control. So if you put each of them in front of you, you'll see they have a slightly different curvature. Uh, smaller sizes targeted more around control. More curved. Uh, yeah, they, they sort of curve down and then go into sort of a horizontal flatter tip at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, the bigger sizes, they look more sort of flat in the center and then they curve down very slightly towards the end. And uh, what does that do? That, loose, that helps to loosen the, the roll on the bigger sizes. Yeah. So the, the sizes that are not as roll friendly by nature because they're bigger. Because they're bigger. So loosening them up and then exactly. getting the same kind of turning into them. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, obviously the other big difference between the SLS construction and the D-Lab. Uh, on the D-Lab, we've sort of integrated the fuselage, the front half of the fuselage is integrated into the wing, which you know makes this super smooth transition here and helps to lower the drag as much as possible. Um, and also makes a lighter, lighter setup. Whereas on the SLS, you've got your fuselage sort of bolted on top. It's sort of a bigger imprint. You've got the bolts, everything at the bottom. So not as uh, slick as the, as the D-Lab little bit heavier uh, but still I mean we're still pretty happy with how well we managed to integrate our fuselage and the the compromise between sort of rigidity the fact that you can swap your wings easily the fact that the wings themselves are a little bit cheaper they are definitely interesting for some of our customers mm -hmm. that don't maybe need the full-on um, D-Lab treatment uh, the SLS are still a very very good option yeah, yeah. So you would say the, the person who is coming from his her first foil and then 
started jumping and enjoys jumping a lot, yeah. that's probably the option. Yeah, and for sure. Also, yeah. if they take it to the surf, yeah. if they're riding waves and that's there. Yeah, like primarily if you like to ride fast, look into the calf. And if you want to turn, if you want something agile under your feet, uh, and if you're not too worried about uh, sort of losing a little bit in terms of glide, mm -hmm. because you're often with your wing in your hand anyway, and you can just power up whenever it's needed, uh, or you're kite foiling, then uh, yeah, look into these, uh, these calves. Uh, they are still very easy to use. We've spent quite a while tuning them with the stabilizers. You'll see that we recommend on each of them. We'll give you the, the recommended stabilizer so that they feel very balanced at all speed range. And uh, yeah, in the case of the D-Labs, you can also pick between uh, a 37 centimeter tail, which is the equivalent of our 60 centimeter aluminum fuselage, or this 43 centimeter tail which will give you a little bit more control, both in pitch, in roll, it will sort of stabilize everything. So that's also something you can, uh, you can uh, change. And we've made this pretty slick little way of combining the two where the, the bolt head is actually hidden under your mast and there's nothing on the other side. So it kind of looks like it, uh, it's a single piece glider once you put it together. Minimum drag. Minimum drag and you're using the bolts that normally connects the front part of the fuselage to the mast. You're using them to also connect the, the rear part of the fuselage. So it goes through everything. We think it's a pretty smart way of doing it. Um, but yeah, you still have the option to trim your back wing, more or less angle of attack, move to a smaller, or bigger wing if you feel like you want something a bit different. So the, for example, the Spencers riding in Maui. Maui, we know lifty waters. Yeah. Um, compared to freshwater lakes here, for example, um, the Spencers tune their back wing, uh, take some angle out. Yeah, I mean, they are obviously kind of at the extreme in terms of level of riders. So they don't mind something that's a little bit more twitchy in pitch. Mm -hmm. So often what they do is they will use our minus shims, like minus 0.3 or minus 0.6 degrees. Uh, lift the leading edge of the back wing a little bit compared to the trailing edge. Uh, they will gain a little bit of speed from that. It'll, it's going to feel a little bit more... Reduce a little bit the front foot. Reduce a little bit the front foot. They like also riding their mast a little bit more forward. Uh, it, it, it just brings the setup even more alive, but maybe not for all the guys out there. But for sure, something you can experiment with. You can play around use negative shims, push your, push your mast a little bit further forward, or even um, look into our brand new S range of stabilizers that are coming out uh, with our new Wiz front wing. Uh, if, mainly if you want to use these wings a little bit more in the surf than, than freestyling, then it might be interesting to look into these uh, S stabilizers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other disciplines, like you mentioned kite foiling, so it's yeah. probably the go-to wing for kite foilers. For sure. Yeah. If you're a kite foiler, anything else in our range is going to feel a little bit wide because everything else is, has a higher span, a higher spec ratio. Um, although it is possible to kite foil on anything, you will feel better kite foiling on, a, on the Carve 2.0. Okay. Um, prone foiling? You can, for sure. Uh, don't expect to link that many waves because that's the area where the Carve doesn't quite match our other wings. Um, again, if you ask the guys in Hawaii, they'll tell you, oh, no problem, I can link five ways with this. But and they, they tow foil. I know they tow foil a lot yeah, with this. They tow foil a lot. For tow foiling, as soon as you can get pulled into a wave, no problem. Yeah. But if you expect to pump around and connect waves, it's not what they're made for. They just, when you start uh, going that slowly, you know, you know, kick out of a wave at whatever, 10 knots or something, you're kind of out of the speed range these things have been designed for. So. Okay. If you're a Spencer, you can probably make it work, but for us mere mortals, probably not. <laughs> so um, thinking about our customer, if we have a person, um, yeah, coming from his first foil, let's say he's uh, she he, 75 kilos, been on a 1500 or 1250 before, yeah. and then he wants to progress into the next wing, already into jumps, into surf. Would you recommend going 1100 or 850? Or yeah. even smaller? I think it'll be between the 850 and the 1100. Um, it depends 
a lot on what kind of wind strength you know you're going to be using them if you are somewhere where there's a lot of wind you can probably even get going on the 650 mm. really depends um but uh yeah in general if coming from a 1500 probably down to the 1100 or 850 would be the right move yeah probably i need to mention this is a great option also for the kids yeah. um that's the one that's going all the way down to 500. Yeah. my junior he's uh just turned nine and he's jumping around on that 500. his friends also they got the same wing mm. uh for the like mid mid-size kids uh 650 is a really great option we have a lot of upcoming um young blood uh, team riders rippers they are pretty much all of these are on the 650 or 500. Yeah. um and to start them it's also i think it's a great option to go on an 850 if you're not coming from a free yeah. um, but that's definitely the, the step down for the kids to then have something that suits their riding um, or that, let's say their, their weight yeah um, that's the, the yeah the, the little car 500 is a fast wing I mean um, we get it to about 30 knots winging and I'm just shy of 40 knots kite foiling on it so it's it's actually really fast yeah yeah okay and then the big one on the other hand 14 30. 1430 yeah it's going to be light wind like not so much power in the surf probably yeah and the bigger guy bigger guy mainly it's mainly the bigger guy i'd say yeah yeah all right thanks to rome that was uh, helpful info i think i hope you guys enjoy that and uh, take something out for you and if you like that content give us a like and a subscribe and we hope to see you in the next episode of foil tech